let's transition a little bit to treatment. Um, uh, I wish we could talk more about prevention, but we don't really understand how to prevent ovarian cancer other than identifying a family at risk and doing a risk-reducing surgery. There are other ways, hysterectomy, birth control pills, and I get it. Best way to prevent ovarian cancer is through genetic testing. But let's transition to treatment. Um, surgery is an important component. Uh, all of us are surgeons, but as gynecologic oncologists, we also all give chemotherapy. Um, there's been a lot of discussion about when to do the operation. When the operation is done in the, in the beginning, that's called primary debulking. When it's given sandwiched between the third and the fourth cycle of chemotherapy, it's called neoadjuvant. Um, the, Angelus, there's been a lot of discussion and even a, a consensus conference, a statement about neoadjuvant chemotherapy versus primary debulking. Tell us about that. Well, I it's a very good, informative article. I encourage everybody to go and read it. One of the most important things I think about this article is that it provides the background and a review of the data in this area. As you are aware, there's been four randomized clinical trials now exploring neoadjuvant chemotherapy versus primary uh, cytoreductive surgery. There's actually another trial that's ongoing. The TRUST trial got started in Europe. That's They're right. trying to open it here in the States, which I, I hope we'll be able to do. Um, but what's important with all the four trials that have been completed is they've all demonstrated that in these select patients, and I think they are high-risk patients, that the morbidity with a primary debulking surgical approach rather than a neoadjuvant approach is higher. And then the other thing that two of the trials have demonstrated um, is that there's no difference in overall survival outcomes between either approach. But these are very select patients who I, I don't think are, are represented across all the trials that we've done in gynecologic oncology group, for instance, probably patients that are at higher risk for having a suboxone debulk disease or harder to resect disease and probably more aggressive tumor biology. So we have two options. Start with an operation, start with chemotherapy. It's the toughest decision we make. It's great if we do an operation, we completely resect the tumor, we feel good about ourselves, we made the right decision. If we do an operation, we leave a lot of tumor behind, we should have used neoadjuvant as you suggested. How do you figure it out? Who gets started with chemotherapy and who gets started with surgery? Well, I think there's some easy uh, answers in that complex question. The, the first one is obviously a patient that has significant comorbidities mm -hmm. who you're not going to be able to get through uh, the primary debulking uh, very easily or it's going to result in an SICU stay of, of many days that has its own set of sequela. So that's an easy one, someone that you don't think can, can withstand that. And then there are some patients who you can see on imaging or some people are now using a laparoscopic platform to assess mm -hmm. whether they think they could get this patient down to optimal disease. And now the new optimal, as you know, is really Complete. trying to get these patients down yeah. to R0 with no gross residual disease. And there's some scans and exams that you do that you just know there's no way that's going to happen. And, and in those cases, uh, it makes some sense to go to the neoadjuvant. Um, I think the, the biggest problem with neoadjuvant is, uh, for, for those who are not strong believers in it, is, is looking at contemporary databases from centers that do aggressive cytoreduction. And you look at their survivals, and they're 30, 40 percent, maybe even higher than what we see with the 29 or 30 months that we see with the largest trials, EROTC and the CHORUS trial. So that makes you think, you know, better than 29, 30 months, but now we're going up to 40 plus months um, and higher. Are those fair comparisons or not? We don't know. We'd love to see that uh, construct within the, within the framework of a randomized trial, and, and certainly that, that's important. The other thing I'd say about the neoadjuvant that is really appealing is that you do increase your R0 rate. You increase your optimal debulking right. and your R0 rate while decreasing blood loss and mortality. But the, the survival's surgery. not the but same. But the survival doesn't. Yeah. So why isn't that R0 translating? Is it that we're inducing uh, resistance yes. with so many cells being yeah. exposed to chemo? Is it that we're not giving enough? Is it the fact that... Or they have more know, tumor and they're and, sicker. And not, <laughs> as I say, I maybe mean, we're not giving enough cycles, though, after the, could be. After the, the surgery. Paired, I'm sorry to jump in, time, but you said it. Yeah. It's, it's you're comparing these different trials. It's not just apples and oranges. It's fruit salad. Yeah. That's okay? right. These patients are completely different. And to do a, a comparison of a randomized GOG trial where patients had to have surgery they've done well, they have a strong enough performance status, they can go on trial, is completely different than taking a patient newly diagnosed 
and randomizing them to one of these studies. It's, right, it's right. not even the same. It's not a fair yeah. comparison. But I do think that the, there's a lot of ambiguity about who's still the best candidate. So you, we all have those. Uh, you see the, the CT scan, the exam, they got a big you know, uh, pelvic disease, not infrequent, that they're going to need a rectal sigmoid resection. You know, the diaphragms are hard to assess, and the hardest part to assess is really how much mesenteric involvement is, which is really a go-no-go -no -go decision. Yeah. So, as you know, there's been multiple different ways to try to um, assess that. Um, we think, in our place, that we think that the best way to assess that with the highest fidelity is with laparoscopy. But <clears throat> we've looked at, um, uh, at CT scans and different algorithms CT scans as other people have, and it's very hard to find a set of parameters that have right. external yeah. validity. Like what I can do at my shop versus what you can do at your shop, and I'll take it one more one more step. When we look at our C, our educated radiologists trying to reproduce the um, feasibility and no feasibility by laparoscopy, we can't even reproduce it yeah. within our own center. So I think that there's a lot to be done here. I think the maybe the ultimate answer is going to end up with this combination of knowing the molecular profile, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. I think, and. And, at, and assigning that with findings that we get from other non-invasive ways. And so circulating tumor cells and such may be a way to come up with those kinds of profiles that it would help. But, well, better. we're coming a long way. I yeah. mean, there was a paper from your center that you yeah. combined with Memorial where you looked at 20, uh, I think, clinical parameters and yeah. four laboratory parameters, and you came up with nine that were predicted. Yeah. And then you came up with a scoring system right. um, that yet needs to be validated. But nonetheless, it's very interesting because we're much further along than we were five, ten years ago. And, and, yeah. But here's the thing I hate to see, right? So the GEO oncologist makes the best decision, mm -hmm. makes a, 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 a decision, then makes an incision, and says, oh, I had to try. So they get in there, they stir it all up, they remove half of the tumor, <laughs> they lose a lot of blood, <laughs> leave a lot of tumor behind, and you yeah. say, why'd you do that? Well, I made the wrong decision. I should have done neoadjuvant. Yeah. And I say, what you should have done is stopped. Yeah. Make an incision, do a little biopsy, close her up, and come back and fight another day. Yeah. So you know the the what Rob was alluding to was a laparoscopy, the first look laparoscopy, which yeah. I'll give uh, Michael Fermat Fermat's pr credit. credit for because he said that years ago. <laughs> but um, I find that that has been really helpful. So like Thomas yeah. said, I use those clinical factors to help determine yeah. who I'll even think is a candidate for that surgical assessment. And then based on those clinical factors and their CT scan, we go to the OR, we do that small incision, we yes. make an assessment. Same. And I have to tell you, one of the things that I think is the hardest um, to debulk to R0 is the patients who have miliary diffuse peritoneal mm -hmm. disease. You can't do it. Yeah, can't do it. Yeah, it's just yeah. not gonna happen. So, so I'm gonna say something that may be um, pretty crazy to you all, but I, if I can get somebody less than one centimeter, I'm gonna go for it. I'm not gonna, yeah, I was gonna bring not up, yeah. go for it if I can't get them to R0. I think there is some value yeah. in trying to debulk as much of the disease as possible. I am concerned that that R0 number, I mean, that was based on the ERTC trial that just showed the patients that were debulked to R0, that that was the only thing that was statistically significant for prognosis in the clinical factors that they evaluated. So maybe that's old school, but- So let's keep moving here. I think, I think the, the bottom yeah. line though is, is that when you're trying to make this decision, surgery versus chemotherapy first, a gynecologic oncologist has to get involved. Right. Yeah. That's the take home message. Mm -hmm. and, and we understand it's a tough decision. Uh, up front. Up and, front. And that's yeah. the key. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When, when that decision before the, for the before incision is made. Yeah, before you first does the chemotherapy. And, and to emphasize that, I think that, to emphasize <laughs> that point, when you, if you were to go in, make a mistake, take out not as, as much tumor as you'd hoped that you could have uh, obtained. Going back and redoing the operation after after an induction set of cycles is not the answer. Right. So We've we know that from as randomized long as you trials. Tried the not first two. time. Right. right. A little mini laparotomy and right. a mental right. biopsy is not trying. That's not trying. Right. But if you try, a second and operation is not helping. Not going to help. Okay.